kind of want to do an update on my table build as you can see I got a lot further along um, I'll probably do another two videos three videos um, and or more because I want to show how to configure it and do all the wiring for the steppers and um, and the drivers and all that also <clears throat> we just had a hurricane down here in Florida last week so jobs got put behind this got put behind um, but I did have a chance to paint it um, I'm really really happy with the color it looks good it looks really good it's a single stage automotive paint my last table I really wish I had used an automotive paint instead of rattle cans because the rattle cans didn't last long all right let me show you the cabinet <clears throat> as you can see I still don't have my card in there because I'm still using my other machine but I do have my 72 volt power supply wired up um, got a plug and a switch on this one on off switch fans on the front keep it cool exhaust fan on the or the inlet at the top for the cool air to blow down and keep all that stuff cool and then blow out the door <clears throat> as you can see I have all of the steppers wired um, these are up here on the top these are my inputs um, they were all labeled uh, X Y yeah they're still labeled um, three of these are um, the NEMA 34 with the 72 volt and one the Z axis is going to be 48 volt um, 520 ounce I don't see putting a 34 frame motor for a z-axis um, I'm not machining anything that's a plasma table all my outputs are wired also and as you can see they're all plugs um, I still have all of my um, these are all my limit switches and stuff like that that will plug directly into uh, the card for the MP3700, I think it is. But I will uh, do another video on, you know, how to wire all this up. These drives here, you can set the dip switches for your amperage. You don't have to use a resistor, which is really nice. Um, I know people speak highly of these drives, and I guarantee I'm going to be happy with them. Um, cabinets mounted nice um, the MP3700 is going to be mounted up on the top here I have all this room for that so it'll be up out of the way kept dry and then I'll, I'll still run a remote uh, monitor and computer will be on a, a remote uh, station so I'll be able to move it around five or six feet away from the table. Uh, my table, I will be loading my sheets from the side uh, because I don't have room in my shop to load it from the front or the back. Um, this is going to go underneath pallet racking, you know, similar to pallet racking like that. This table is going to go underneath it. See, I have all my reduction drives. I have these proximity sensor switches on my uh, little Grizzly Hobby Mill and I like them, they're waterproof. Uh, so I put them on this table and as you can see I will have some adjustment there also for when my gantry is getting squared up and I have another one on this side also fully adjustable. And I have another proximity 
switch here for homing. Um, I probably need to put one on this side for a limit. Um, it, I, it all depends. I'm going to see. Um, I don't have my Z axis mounted because it's still on my other table. This newer feather touch. I really like it um, because you can plug all your sensors in here and only one wire runs back to your control which is here this is all your limits um, your touch off your ohmic everything is in this one wire so I mean it really cleans it up it cleans it up a lot and you can see that this one runs through my cable track and it plugs up there and another thing that I really like is both of the if you plug two proximity sensors in here this is on the same circuit so um, you can if you trip one or the other it'll do the same thing so you can use it as your um, uh, your touch off for your like if you don't have a breakaway you have one of the newer style um, uh, torch holders that have the ohmic switches not ohmic but proximity sensors like this in it um, you can plug them both into here if you trip one or the other they'll both do the same thing which is super super nice and then there's your ohmic here I really like that only one wire goes back instead of having all of these sensor wires going back I naturally had to take all of my linear rails and my gear dry or rack off to paint them I'm still short this piece because that's coming off my other table and I don't have any gear rack up here because that's on my other table and it's coming off of that um, I'm not gonna buy two new ones um, when I already have them I mean that really 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 looks good I'm extremely happy with that and We'll take a walk inside here and I'll show you my um, torch holder that I got. Here's my torch holder. This is one of the Chinese ones that I ordered off of eBay. Yes, I know you can buy more expensive ones. But I'm already into this table for a chunk of change. And I don't want to spend any more unnecessary money on things that will do the same thing. I did have to shorten this because it, had, it was long. It came out to here. And it had a weird mount on it, um, but I machined or I cut that off, machined it flat, and uh, put some bolts on there so it'll hold. Now, both of these sensors here, they will get mounted in these two. That way. These can be used as my homing switches um, and limits. So if the torch starts diving and or it hits something, you know, going you know going one way or the other, one switch or the other will you know send the signal back and stop the machine. Um, or if the ohmic doesn't work. Um, this will do the touch off also 
Um, that will get mounted on my Z-axis. But, and that's what that plugs for, for the Z-motor. I can't wait to see this table here run, which will be very soon, because I'm real close. I might wait on the, the water bladder system, that way I can get this up and running. I've just, it's been too long. But that's it so far.